Today on Timescast Tech, Apple unveils its latest iPhone. The first time I stood in EXO, I couldn't say anything. I was in shock. Getting paraplegics back on their feet and taking our pictures back in time. Instagram's retro photo filters are now well known, but there are other apps that do the same trick. Hey, welcome to Timescast Tech. I'm David Gillen. Well, it's iPhone day again, people. Apple unveiled the iPhone 5 this afternoon, and it's the usual Apple Palooza out there. Disclosure, I am buying one. Why? Because I am an idiot. I dropped my old phone the other day and have been holding out for the latest version. So what's it got? Well, it's bigger, it's thinner, it's lighter, and people are even chattering about how the iPhone might boost the economy. I'm serious. <laughs> My colleague is here to discuss the details. So you've checked this out. Uh, what are your first impressions? Well, you know, it's the same story all over again. You know, it's the iPhone 5. It's, uh, it's, it's longer. You know, it's got a faster processor. It looks the same as the old one. And how much can Apple really change this thing at this point? You know, and I think at this point, they don't really need to, you know, blow us away. They just yeah. need to convince us to upgrade to a new phone, which is what you're doing. So... <laughs> <laughs> you know, but you, we were talking just before this, this the show began. You're kind of a, almost a little underwhelmed here. I mean, has Apple just created so much hype and hoopla about each new iteration that it's just getting harder to like raise the excitement? Well, well to be fair, I've been following the, this, the iPhone for six years now, and you know, it's kind of hard to impress somebody who follows this stuff so much. But you know, what, what really surprised me this time was that there was such a lack of surprise. You know, all the yeah. secrets were leaked in advance. Uh, the component manufacturers were like putting out. Well, this, this is the size of the screen. Here's the new dock connector. It's a smaller dock connector. Here's, here's this part. Here's that part. Time out. Time out. Let's go to that dock connector. This is the this is the port. This is the this is the, the the charger and so forth. So they've changed this, and there was a lot of discussion about this. And you're contemplating what this means for other things that you know. I mean, my my stereo that yeah. I stick my iPhone you, into. You know what's and, funny? And on so on. so yeah, it's a smaller dock connector now. And it's, it's no longer the same as that, that clunky one that we've been using right. for a long time, yeah. right? So, you know, what's interesting is that Apple said, okay, it's time to change the dot connector. They don't really say why, though. So it's smaller okay. now. They don't say, oh, it's got a big, the iPhone's got a bigger battery now. Oh, we made room for a bigger processor that's faster. They didn't say any of that. They just changed the port. We don't even know why. That's kind of what I'm uh, disappointed about. I'm kind of surprised they're not trying to brag about something here, you know? <laughs> but um, I think, you know, the big picture for the consumers is they're going to have to buy some new cables if they want to keep using, uh, you know, power chargers around the house. Apple says they're going to use an adapter. They're going to sell an adapter okay. so you can use the old cables. Right. But sure. then you, got, you have to buy an accessory. You have to buy all these accessories. So it's, uh, it's good news for accessory makers, but sort of uh, bad news for uh, consumers until we actually know what the benefits are. Okay, now, you know, last week, Motorola, uh, well, actually, Motorola, Motorola Mobile, which is Google, uh, and Nokia announced their latest uh, smartphones, and Amazon was debuting some updated version of the Kindles. I mean, everybody is just, like, desperately trying to grab a bigger piece of this market. Yeah. My question, my question is, you know, given the dominance of Apple and Samsung in this space, you know, the, the, the third player is, is a distant third, no? Right, I mean, at this point, there is no relevant third player. Because we can say, a lot of people say, oh, we ship millions of phones every yeah. quarter. But shipping isn't the same as selling to the consumer. Shipping is just selling to the retailer. And if they're, if they're not profiting, if they're shipping a lot of phones, they're not profiting, it doesn't mean anything. And the fact of the matter is that Apple and Samsung are the only ones shipping a lot of phones and making a lot of profit at the same time. So there's no third player right now, as much as anybody would like to say they are. Right, yeah, it's remarkable. And I, I've said this before, that, 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 that Nokia used to be the number Number one uh, yeah, maker, really, yeah. Um, and and you wonder like how they're ever going to get their mojo back here. <laughs> I mean, number one phone maker. I yeah. mean, to to be fair, they sell they still sell the feature phones pretty well overseas mm -hmm. and in the, like uh, you know less uh, privileged economies and so forth. But um, you know, it's a uh, it's it's a battle. It's an up, uphill battle for uh, Nokia to try to take down Apple or anybody at this point. Okay. Is there anything else that we should know? I mean, like, just again, I know that this event, uh, the, the great, un the great unveiling ooh, of, <laughs> of the iPhone five, you know, is, is uh, either it's still going on or it's just finished. Anything else that you notice about this new one that just jumps out at you as like, wow, that was special. Well, you know, usually there's a, a surprise feature that Apple has kept hidden from yeah. everybody. And I, I think the news is still unraveling right now, but you know, last year it was Siri, the year before that it was a retina display, and I think this time it's just 
it's it's a longer screen. You know, that's kind of going to be the big feature for everybody. I don't know if people are going to have to change their pants and stuff. Now they, <laughs> they have a bigger screen, that okay. kind of thing. But um, I think people are going to, they might enjoy watching video on it more. You know, okay. they might enjoy looking at pictures more. Some applications might be better functioning with this bigger screen. So that's probably the highlight feature. Got it. Now, look, I understand that uh, earlier you spoke with uh, Jason McKenzie of HTC, and that's the big Taiwanese company, which was a, used to be a, a leader in the handset market, right? Yeah, you know, for a very brief period of time, they were number one in the United States smartphone sales. And somehow they kind of just took a dip. They kind of uh, disappeared really quickly. And I spoke to Jason uh, last week, and he had said that, you know, I, he said that their issue was they didn't really have a strongly branded phone, kind of like, you know, Samsung has the Galaxy phone. Right. Sure. Apple has this iconic iPhone. HTC, nobody really thought about the brand when it came to buying these phones. Like m most people thought about the carrier of Verizon selling an HTC right. phone. ATT is selling an. Uh, HTC phone, and I think that's sort of their, their issue, their marketing okay. issue. Well, let's, let's, let's take a look at that now, okay? Now, if the market just narrows down to two competitors, what does that do to innovation? I, I want to talk about Apple and Samsung. I think it's a bad thing for the consumer, just like it is in every industry. So if you have just two giants that are ruling the thing, it slows down innovation. What can HTC do to come back? The smartphone industry is unlike any other. It moves extremely quick. And so what HTC needs to do is continue to be the fastest mover in the industry, bringing new innovations in technology like we have since we pioneered smartphones in the early 2000s. That's the first thing. The second thing we need to do is we need to do a much bigger job in terms of communicating the value of HTC's products, the value of HTC One, which is the world's top-rated Android phone in the market, and be able to communicate that on the rooftops to make sure that our customers, our consumers are aware of that, and so that they're asking for HTC One when they walk into the retail stores. Do you feel that growth in the smartphone market is slowing down? And if so, are there other types of devices you guys have to explore beyond smartphones and tablets? Our core business is smartphones. The tablet business is something that's very interesting to us, especially based on how we've, how we've performed in the past in, in launching them. And we'll continue to look at that. And so I think those are two areas that are right in our wheelhouse. And we keep an open mind about other mobile technologies. I think the smartphone business continues to evolve. So, um, and, and the wireless business as a whole continues to evolve with new technologies, and so I expect we'll continue to see new form factors, new innovation and in design. Um, right now we're on this trend of bigger and bigger displays. We see a trend right now, for example, in wearables in technology, whether it's Nike fuel bands and things like that, and we'll see how, how those technologies merge down the road. So HTC glasses are a possibility at some point. We keep it open mind. You can never say never in, <laughs> in wireless. It moves very fast. So anything is possible. So what do you think? We've got Google's goggles and now HTC glasses. What do you think? I mean, in all seriousness, can these guys ever become a household name like Apple or Google? I think HTC has a long way to go, of course, but that, that's uh, needless to say for any company sure. in, in this mobile market. The market changes so fast, and with the Apple-Samsung litigation, we can see sort of like the verdict and see what happens with that. I think everybody's sort of like aiming at that opportunity to either become number three or edge out Samsung to become number two. Hey, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, David. So next up, Bionics. They've filled our imagination for decades. If you grew up in the 70s, you might remember the $6 million man or the bionic woman. But so far, bionics have mostly been the stuff of comic books and Hollywood. But now, bionic suits are suddenly here. Bionic suits always promise a thrill for movie audiences and even action heroes. But for people like Joey Abaca, it promises more than a rush. It's cutting-edge technology that could allow Abaca to walk again. Oh, it's awesome. I love getting back up, even just standing straight. It's awesome. Three years ago, Abaca was paralyzed from the waist down when he was trapped by an earth-moving machine he and some friends were using to build dirt bike jumps. The short story is I got pinched knees to chest, so my spinal cord got stretched. But now Abaca is using high-tech leg braces made by the California-based company Exobionics. It was a lot more comfortable than I would have thought it would be, and it's really smooth. I thought it would be kind of jerky, but it's really smooth and really natural. The EXO is among a new generation of full body suits, or wearable robots, designed for the disabled as well as for industrial and military purposes. They are hardly in widespread use, but are becoming more than science fiction. In 2010, Raytheon debuted a suit designed to help reduce the injuries soldiers acquire from repetitive heavy lifting. 
This year, Claire Lomas, who became paralyzed after a horseback riding accident, completed the London Marathon in a suit made by an Israeli firm called Argo Medical Technologies. And exo suits are used in 15 rehabilitation centers in the United States. We know there's other uh, conditions that people are going to want to use these exos. Um, stroke, cerebral palsy, MS, ALF, I mean all those conditions, um, just old age. And so it's really cool to think that, yes, this is the first step in bionic technology, but where can we actually take it? The EXO took six years to develop and weighs 50 pounds. It is made of aluminum and titanium, and there is an onboard computer carried on a user's back. But the suit is specially designed so that its weight is transferred to the ground rather than to a person's body. Yep. Matt Tilford is a company spokesman and EXO user. The first time I stood in EXO, I couldn't say anything. I was in shock. I was standing again. I was looking in people in the eyes again, not being looked down on. It was amazing. Tilford says he suited up 10 to 15 times before feeling entirely comfortable. EXO hopes to begin selling a suit for individual use in 2014. For now, they are only used in rehabilitation centers, which pay $140,000 with a $10,000 annual service contract per suit. If this was on the market, yes, it would be in my home. I would rarely be using my chair. Even as more paraplegics take their first steps with these suits, there are technological challenges. The suits are battery powered, so they can only be used for a few hours at a time before recharging. But for Joey Abaca and others, even a few hours of movement offers a superhuman transformation. It's wild stuff. <laughs> One note, you can't buy your own ESCO suit. That's because the FDA currently requires that users be supervised by therapists inside medical facilities. But the company is working with the FDA to come up with a set of protocols to move forward. They're not there quite yet. So from life-changing bionics, we go to apps, which are changing the lives of, well, just about everyone. There are more than a million apps out there, games, mobile versions of websites, and tools. Tools that make everyday life easier, propel us into the future, and, as the Times app critic Kit, Kit Eaton offers in this review, also take us back to the days of old. I'm Kit Eaton of the New York Times. My app smart column this week is a nod to nostalgia. I live a tech-centric life in Portugal with my wife and kids looking forward to new adventures, but it's still fun to pretend you're in the past. Your smartphone might be your best chance at time travel. Instagram's retro photo filters are now well known, but there are other apps that do the same trick. The $1 Nostalgia Pack in Photo Editor by Avery allows you to apply old-fashioned effects and defects to your photos, even layering one on top of another. It's available for both iOS and Android. One iOS-only app is the $1 1-bit camera. This generates pixelated black and white images that might remind you of the PC's earliest days. 8mm vintage camera with a user-friendly interface crafts our modern home videos back into scratchy celluloid. It's two dollars on iOS only. It's especially fun to send my kids back to the 1960s with this app, at least virtually. Android users have the option of video cam illusion. Not only is it free, but it's also more powerful. It lets you add different filters, including the 8mm effect, but I found it complex, and older Android devices may be challenged by processing its heavy effects. Finally, Retro music fans have a pick of their own. Vinyl Love, $1 on iOS. It tries to bring back the magic of the spinning record, graphically. The app's interface is designed to let you search through your MP3s as if they were vinyl discs stored in a crate. It even has that long forgotten needle scratch. And finally, is a four square check-in an invitation to crash a party? And how long can you go without, without responding to a text message before it's rude? Go to our Bits blog and tell us what you think. Jenna Wortham will be here next week to talk about digital etiquette. That's our show. Thanks for watching.